Hello Explorers, so today's video is all about GRE. Should you really study for GRE? Are the, are the universities really asking for it? How do I prepare for GRE? And uh, how do I gather my friends and family support, dating life? There is all of this we are going to talk about in today's video. Let's get started. Okay, so chapter titles. First, we will talk about why I, or should you really study for GRE? And then we'll talk about how I studied for GRE, my own obsession about studying for GRE. And then we'll talk about some uh, quick tips and tricks from my own experience. Uh, we'll also talk about friends, family, and dating life. Yeah, you, you heard that right. We definitely have to talk about your dating life. But before that, uh, I quickly want to tell where I am going. So right now I'm walking to a train station and I'm taking a metro train to the office. So I'll, I'm planning to vlog all the way through the train and then after the train station and hopefully by the time I reach the office, I finish vlogging. You get all the information that you need about the GRE. I want to start this video with a very quick motivation on just like less than one minute of why you want to do MS in US. So I, I worked at several startups uh, after graduation and I finally got a chance to work for this company called Nextdoor, which eventually went IPO. So there was this one day that the company went IPO, not just me, many people in the company, we had our shares, the, the, the shares, vested and unvested shares, crossed $1 million, just like a tiny bit when the stocks touched $13. It, it just barely crossed 1 million. So many people in the company felt this way. I don't have all that money because you can Google next door stock and see where the stock is. So it's all gone. The stock went down. Uh, so that's a de separate story for a separate video. But why I'm telling this is because a guy who took a one way flight from India to US with just two big briefcases, that's all I had when I came here. After working for several startups, I finally got a chance to work at this company, which I, which I was able to help it to go IPO and to be in that day with uh, all the other employees of the company. It, it's actually many, a dream for many people. For that, I think it's worth doing MSN US. So you might be asking, the universities are actually offering GRE waiver, why should I even bother studying for GRE and why should I do the exam at all? So I'll explain why. So let's say you are applying to a university that is offering GRE waiver, but then you got like five backlogs and when you submit your profile, uh, when the admissions committee actually take a look at the profile, all they will see is five backlogs, there's no GRE. So that means how, how do I trust this person that they will actually graduate, right? By writing GRE, what you're showing is that you are disciplined enough to actually complete that competitive exam and produce a, produce a decent score. Because your, your score by getting like five backlogs, your score is already not that great. So by by doing a really good uh, by by doing the GRE and getting a good score, what you are showing is that you are disciplined enough to actually, when they give you the admit, you will be able to get towards graduation by finishing all the papers and completing the graduate requirement. So for that reason, writing GRE is definitely worth it if you really want to get into a, a good university. So the GRE exam pattern have changed a little bit now, but that doesn't matter. You still have to be you to have you still have to have some form of uh, obsession to actually complete the exam. So. The next big thing is, how do I actually find the motivation to study for the exam? So the best advice I would say, is something that worked for me, is actually booking the exam date. So it's only after I booked the exam, I got really serious about studying. And uh, after I booked the exam, it, there, there is a clock that is ticking. This is, there's only 50 more days to go, and I have to, and 30 more days to go. So you, you would start forming a plan for the next 30 days, the days leading up to your exam. So that's actually the best motivation for you to start studying for GRE. It doesn't matter like even if you plan like 100 days ahead, only after booking you will get very serious about the exam. So I, I highly recommend booking the exam date. this huge billboard and somebody climbed on top of it all the way to the top and did some graffiti there man 
they risk their life to actually scribble some random thing now look how tall that is like probably like 50 70 feet high some people do not like me vlogging here the next thing is gre obsession so how do you actually prepare for gre is i i, I was seriously obsessed about preparing for gre and the days 50 days leading up to the exam i was pretty much studying like every waking hour i would start i would wake up start studying eat breakfast study and eat lunch study and then uh, basically uh, all the time there, there is this obsession cycle that you'd have to take advantage of and before the obsession cycle gets over you'd have to finish giving the, the GRE exam. That's how I studied. I'm going to get a bit more technical here. There is this concept called multi-touch attribution. The, all these big marketing companies, they're all using it. So if you notice any advertisement in your in your TV channel, like the night before, and then the next morning when you're going to office or, or college, you will see a big billboard in the street somewhere saying, it's probably the same actor or actress standing in the billboard advertising the same company. So the way it works is, the first touch point would be the advertisement that you saw the night before. And the second touch point is the billboard that you are seeing the next morning in the street they they got you on two touch points and that's how they store some important information in your brain like their company name or the store name it could be a clothing store or a jewelry store they got two touch points for the same person we have to follow the same thing for GRE and if you are studying uh, vocabulary words you have to study like 10 words the night before take a printout of those 10 words and take it to you when you're going for a college or, uh, or commuting to work in the morning like 8 a.m 9 a.m study the same 10 words again the next morning and see if you can remember the meaning for those words and that's how you do the same thing the multi-touch attribution the main reason that this works is because your brain gets better at it when you are uh, when you are remembering the same thing the next morning after you sleep because you it, it you're, you are giving two chances for your brain to actually store that information when you are actually sleeping in fact when you are studying sleep is actually very important uh, I made sure even though I was studying 10 or 12 hours a day uh, I made sure I got good enough sleep every night that's how our brain classifies information and stores it in our brain so that sleep is very important. So the next thing is Google Images. I was using Google Images extensively to Google every single word that I was studying. For example, the, let's take the word prodigal, right? And uh, if you Google what prodigal means, it will show you just one example of a bad boy billionaire. And that, that immediately helps you remember that word for like a very long time. If you are using ChatGPT, you can also ask ChatGPT to generate an image of prodigal, but then it will take a long time. I highly recommend using Google Images. And then mobile app. So I was using one of our uh, dictionary apps. And if you know any other app that will help you remember the words, so by all means. But but the main point is try to use tech to your advantage to study and get ahead. And it could be any way, chat GPT, Google Images, mobile apps, do, do whatever it takes. If you're studying uh, third year or second, third year, or probably third year or finally of the college, you're planning to, if you're planning to study for GRE, how do I actually get time to study for GRE from my college? Like, can I take, it's not easy to get like 20 days break from college. You you have to, your attendance will, will take uh, damage and your uh, head of department will be calling your parents saying your, your son or daughter is not showing up at the college. I solved this problem by having decent relationship with my uh, university staff. They, they knew that I was going to study for MS. Uh, my HOD, he also knew head of the department he also knew that i was uh, wor working towards this in fact i even appeared in person at his uh, hod room and uh, i told him that uh, i'm going to take this kind of break and he was very supportive but there is only a few things he can do at his, at his uh, control so ultimately i still had to pay the fine to the college for not actually going to the college it is my college's rule uh, you may also have to do that but if you have a good rapport with your uh, department uh, professors and staffs uh, they might understand what you are doing and take advantage real good advantage of that 15 or 20 day break that you are getting that's how i found uh, a gap to uh, study uh, from my college if you are a working professional this might be hard uh, you may ha also have to have good relationship with your manager and let them know that you are planning to study higher studies most of the time uh, managers in with even when even in the office environment managers are very supportive you have to do that assessment by yourself is my manager supportive of me studying if, I, if he is or she is not supportive don't tell them and uh, make up some reason and try to get one week off from your work and take real good advantage of that work and also you have to have a f uh, plan for all the other days like after work going back home in the evenings you have to set aside one hour 
no matter how long your commute was and how tired you are you have to study for one hour and uh, in the weekends ultimate advantage like 10 hours saturdays sundays you have to put in that time and if it um, if your work takes extra time try to enforce that boundary at your office um, 5 pm 6 pm start to wind down set that expectation that you are going to leave at 6 pm so now almost all the companies are uh, asking the people to come back so if you are working from home that's the biggest advantage you can get try to get work from home at least like two or three days a week and so that in the evenings you can actually zero commute right after you close the work laptop you open your personal laptop and start studying the next thing we are going to talk about is friendships uh, you are, you have to convey this to your friends somehow that you are going to be unavailable for the next 40 50 days during your college time obviously you you would be going out with your friends like to the movies mall all the time right but for the next 50 days that's not possible you can still be connected with them like on the phone or texting but it's just not possible to go out all the time and still be studying it it just does not work so you have to make that sacrifice for the next 50 days but if you think about it your your undergrad is like 4 years 4 years is like multiply that by 365 days you spend so much time with them already and you will spend more time with them after finishing the GRE or IELTS so the next next 30 or 50 days is is crucial that will just be drop in the ocean that's my opinion relationship Yes, that is uh, your mom, dad, and your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. We'll talk about that next. Family support. Fra- family is a little different from friends. During your college times, your friends are probably 19, 20. The brains are not even fully developed at that time. You can Google this. Teenage brains are actually not fully developed. So there could be some friction in dealing with friends, but family is completely different. As soon as you start putting in 10-hour study days, they will notice that give you ultimate support. That's what happened in my family. My my mom, she gave all her jewelries. Eventually, when it came to time for funding my education, even when you have education loan they will only fund like 80% you still have to pay this 20% and it was my mom's jewelry 15 20% that paid uh, for that share obviously after graduation they got my salary paid that principal and got up, got back all the jewelry and even more and i gifted her she still wears them uh, even though she has all the other jewelry she chooses to wear the ones that i gift her she gets very emotional when when we talk about it uh, uh, similarly my dad he took a lot of risks in uh, funding my education my living expenses yes yeah obviously you, the, the bank does pay some living expenses but it It took some time for me to get the part-time job, the part-time coding job, to actually pay my own living expenses. The first three months, it was my dad who was paying for living expenses. He took all that risk because he saw me putting in that 10-hour study days. S- a similar thing could happen to you, to your uh, in your home as well. So you definitely need parents' support in, get, in getting through this. During all this time, my brother, my ma- my mom was helping me, my dad was helping me, and my brother he was just a spectator. Like, <laughs> uh, in a way, this 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 whole thing is a is a group. the effort is what i feel like and relevé So the next thing we are going to talk about is relationships. If you have boyfriend or girlfriend you are in relationship, I have to warn you this is going to get tough. The next 50 days if you are studying for GRE, obviously you cannot meet them in person. You have to continue to do this long distance through phone and there will be times when uh, you won't be able to communicate with uh, other people clearly. One person is going out and the other person could not meet them. It's it, it will get tough. If you have a really good relationship, your partner will understand this. Uh, if you show them how much this means to you uh, studying for this exam and clearing this exam, they should be very supportive of that and if they are not supportive try to tell them how much this is important and even after that they are not supportive i'll start questioning that relationship but uh, i'm not saying you should break up but i I've, i've noticed a lot of people had this relationship that formed in undergrad go through these kind of tough times either the girl would uh, come come here study for masters and then the boy would come here for study for masters and the relationship will continue uh, through their uh, masters program and then eventually graduate and then uh, they would go for work their relationship would continue to go through in the uh, in the long distance eventually i've seen a lot of uh, these people actually get married these kind of relationships definitely last but you have to have that expectation that many times in the next few years this is going to be long distance and both of you should start embracing that if you don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend don't uh, feel bad after you come here for ms there will you will start seeing like minded people in fact st- while doing masters It is a good time to also also start dating. Uh, some parents may not like what I'm saying, but this is actually a really good time to start dating because uh, this is a time where you will uh, solve challenges together. Uh, both of you will have challenges to solve together while studying masters. Couples who go through these kind of challenges, they actually tend to stick together for years and years and years. That's what I noticed. That's what I that's why I'm telling you early on that doing masters could also be a good time to find a good partner, your life partner. Uh, and start dating i think we are way off topic now uh, we were talking about gre so what's the conclusion 
Uh, is it worth studying for GRE for like 10 hours a day? Yes, it is worth studying 10 hours a day. I will see you in next video.